Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, Fountain Pen Focus, we're going to focus on this. This is the Asvine V169 vacuum filling pen. I love the body of this. I love the way we've got these cutouts. I think it adds a little bit of interest and also quite a bit of weight to the pen. So join me now down on the mat. We'll take a walk through the body. We'll do some size comparisons, weights and measures, a writing sample, then I'll give you my thoughts and a score for this pen. Welcome down to the mat. So here we've got today's pen, the Asfine V169. This is a vacuum filling pen. I love the way this looks. Just look at this. It's like, a, I think it's meant to be a skeleton, but I just think the way the cutouts are fetches a little bit of interest to the pen. Let's take a walk through the body. So we start at the top. The cap at the top, it seems like it's got a very slight curve to it. I don't think it's flat. Hopefully you can see it better in this direction. It might be flat. Let's see if it'll stand up. Nah, there's definitely a little bit of a derm on there. This then comes down and we've got a fairly wide I don't know, would you call it a cap band? But it's at the top here, and that's where the clip is attached. We come from that, we've got the same width all the way down, and we've got this gorgeous metal here. Now, I've seen conflicting reports about this metal pattern. Some reports say each pen is meant to be unique, but I've had other ones where I've seen reviewers saying that the ones they've seen, they all look virtually identical. Let's just turn that around. I love this green acrylic that's inside it. And I think it plays off so well against this metal. Because it's transparent, you can see there, hopefully you can see the nib on the inside. Definitely we can see the section. Bottom of the cap, we've got there. That's fine. And that's all that's on there. Below this metal, there's a little bit of the acrylic that forms the end of the cap. That's got a slight taper, but it feels like a fairly noticeable drop down to the body. The body, very similar to the cap, a little bit narrower, but still we've got that metal there, and we've got that gorgeous, there, that we can see that acrylic, and hopefully, although there's not a lot of ink left, we should be able to see the ink sloshing around inside. There's a slightly wider bit. There's the ink there. Hopefully you can see that coming up now. Up at the top, we've got a blind cap. This is what works the mechanism. So when we've got it down, it does actually move the plunger down and gives does give us the seal into the section. Doesn't move very much though. You can see it just here. So it moves down literally only a fraction. Then it'll move up. Not going to work the mechanism, as we can see there's ink in here. I'm still not 100% certain if having this closed does seal off that section. I use this as I do with the rest of my vacuum pens. Just for safety, I keep that open. Not had any issues so far with any ink leakage. The cap comes off in this one. About between one and a quarter and one and a half turns to reveal this as fine nib. Silver coloured nib, quite plain, so we've got a decorative border. Then below the breather hole, we've got an M, and below that, we've got as fine. This is a medium nib, and it, I've got to be honest, it's a really nice, generous medium nib. I say it's a vacuum filler. Let's swap over. And we'll do some size comparisons. My first two comparisons, my standards, Pilot Metropolitan, Limey Safari. Big difference, isn't there? Let's take the caps off and look at them unposted. Unposted, I've lined them up by the tip of the nib. Not as big a difference now, but the Asfine is still longer than both of these. Let's look at them posted. Here we are with the caps posted. 
The S vine does actually look quite long, but doesn't post at all. You just lift it up. The cap will go down, but it stays on this blind cap and it just doesn't hold. So it's not a pen to use posted. Let's swap over and take a look at some pens in roughly the same price range. The pens I've brought in, I've brought in a Sailor 1911 Junior. I think it's called a Sailor Compass in some markets. This one's a cartridge converter, steel nibbed, 55 Australian dollars. We've got the Asvine V169, and that was 55 Australian dollars, so same price as that Sailor. And I've also brought in a Marjon A11, you know, a clicky pen, that was 59 Australian dollars. Let's swap over and do some weights and measures. Here we've got the rule of measuring, fetching the pen with the cap on. That comes in at 14.5 centimetres. Uncapped. Let's line that up. 13.1 centimetres. Doesn't post, so can't show you it posted. The body at its widest part is 1.31 centimetres. The cap, 1.5 centimetres. And then the section, we've got this concave section here, made of metal, but the shape means it's not too slidey. That goes from 1.01 .01 here in the middle out to 1.14 at either end. Let's fetch in the scales of weighing. So the whole pen, 53 grams. It's got this metal casing on it. That's what adds the weight. The cap, 21 grams. The body, 31 grams. So you can definitely feel the weight of this pen in your hand. And I think it's a good idea that it doesn't post. For me, that'd be just too heavy if it was posted. Let's swap over, fetch in a notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. This is Ayush paper. It's an A4 notebook. It's 100 GSM paper. I really like this paper. Let's do some writing. So we've got here an Asvine V169 with a medium nib. Cost wise, 55 Aussie dollars. The ink is by Dominant Industry. And it's called Lake. I do think in terms of ink to body colour, I actually quite like this as a match. Drying times, so we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Smudging, but ever so slightly. I'll go belt and braces and we'll go for a minute. Yeah, we expect that, don't we? After a minute, that's dry. Let's move the mic down to the page so you can hear the pen writing. Is there any line variation? Remember, it's a steel nib, so that's no pressure. This is with some pressure. So none, with, none, with, none, with. I went a bit too heavy there, so we got some railroading. So a little bit wider, but not enough to really worry about. Flow test. Yeah, handles that does all the way across this A4 page. So what are my thoughts and stores for this pen? We'll start with pen looks. I love the way this pen looks. 
I mean, yes, it does look machined. It is machined. You know, it's obvious it's machined. I love the colour. I love the whole way, the way the whole thing really just comes together. It looks really nice. In terms of pen looks, 9 out of 10. Build quality. So far, had no issues. Seems to be really nice. Solid in the hand. Feels solid. You know, as I said, it's got this metal section, but the way it's shaped, and because I hold my pens down near the bottom, it's comfortable. My fingers just slot in there. They don't move around. It's a nice wide section. The quality wise, I've had no issues. 8 out of 10. Writing experience. The nib's smooth. When we were doing this writing test, you could, have, you could hear the audible feedback, but that doesn't really translate into too much of tactile feedback. Yes, you know you're writing. Got to be aware that this paper, it's got a, a nice bit of texture to it. So you get that extra feedback on here as well. It's nice. It's enjoyable. It's pleasant to use. I'm just going to fetch in my 52 JSM Tomoe River paper. So here we've got the Asfine V169. You know, I'm calling out everything I'm really seeing here. Now, I used to use Diamine Marine only in this pen. But since I got the lake... I think I might swap between the two each time I fill it. Not sure which one I prefer. The marine got a little bit more hint of a green in it, I think. It's very nice. If we look down at the bottom here, you can see, you know, it's a good, puts down a, a nice wet line. In terms of writing experience, 8 out of 10. Ink flow, you know, in my test here, had no issues. Does flow out very nicely. As I've said, it seems to be a nice wet line. I have had issues though. The nib recently has been drying out a lot. You know, if I put the cap on, leave it a day, it would have dried out and I'd need to scribble a bit before I would start writing. But it's the middle of summer here in Australia. It's been, you know, nearly 40 degrees every day. I think that's got a lot to do with the nib drying out. I think it's just too hot because I've noticed a number of my pens which normally don't give me any issues, they've been drying out as well. In the you know spring and autumn and winter, I haven't really had any issues with that. So that's why I'm putting it down to the heat. But it is something which I've got to fetch into the scoring. So for ink flow, 7 out of 10. Comfort. As I've already said, it feels nice in the hand. My finger there just sits nicely. It doesn't move around in the hand. You can feel the weight. It's pleasant. I say it doesn't post, you know, and I think even if it did, I wouldn't because it would just make it too heavy. Very nice. One of the things I do find with this skeleton material, and I'm rubbing my fingers on it, it feels sharp. And sometimes when I'm writing, it does feel a bit sharp in here. So again, I have to be aware of that. But comfort, it's still a good solid 8 out of 10. Value for money. It's nice. It's unusual. This skeleton shape. Only one I've got in my collection. Now I know I think it's Le Band does a skeleton. I may look at getting one of those in the future. Then I can compare the two. I've seen one review where they say that this is copied off the Le Band, But I've only seen that mentioned in one review. So I don't know how true or not it is. It's $55. To me, that's starting to get towards the high end of what I like to pay for a Chinese pen. I can get, as I brought in with the size comparisons, that Sailor 1911 Junior for the same price as this. And it's a steel nib as well. So, yeah, it's still nice. It's still good value. I say just getting towards the high end of the price range that I like to pay. Value for money, 8 out of 10. So that means the total score for the Asvine V169 with the Dominant Industry Lake is 8 out of 10. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got an Asvine V169? Have you got any of the other pens? Please drop your thoughts and comments about them down below. Let's kickstart a conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, 
please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.